Yo, yo, it's Chris from New York, your nigga not from the city though, it's Chris from Long Island, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be reacting to the Friendly Atheist reading from Genesis chapter 1, and today we're going to be breaking apart the uh, condescending nature of a lot of atheists. And once again, I don't really have a problem with atheists, I don't have a problem with people questioning the Bible, but if you're going to do that, uh, you can't act like you know it all, or... um. Because let's be honest here, if you really understood everything that was being read in the Bible, you would believe in the Most High. Um, people that don't believe in the Most High have a problem wrapping up scripture with doctrine. Uh, and what I mean by that is the church teaches things that have nothing to do with the Bible and, and sometimes go contrary to what the Bible says. And they get and atheists get that kind of stuff wrapped up with what the Bible actually has to say. Also, I'm going to be addressing... Um, well, you know, further on down this series, because I'm going to start a series based on this kind of stuff. I'm going to be addressing a lot of misinterpretations that, you know, both Christians and atheists have. And, uh, of course, if you if you see holes in what I'm saying, I'd like to be addressing the in the comments. If you have any questions about what I'm saying, once again, leave a comment. Thanks for coming here to, you know, get this information. Because there's a lot of people that don't really know the Bible in, in the ways that a lot of brothers do And I think it's time that a lot of us A lot of us Christians speak up and Well I'm not really a Christian I take that back But believers in the Bible It's time for us to stand up And really speak out against a lot of the misinformation Being passed by people like this So um Yeah here we go There are people who think the Bible Should be taken literally That it is inerrant Those people haven't even read the first pages Let's Thing is lagging a little bit. There are people who think the Bible should be taken literally, that it is inerrant. Those people haven't even read the first pages. Let's just go through the first chapter of the Bible and talk about all the problems in it, shall we? All right, um, he's already messing up off rip. Let's say, let's say atheism was the right way. And you were trying to change people's hearts into getting into atheism. You're already talking mad condescending, talking about there's people who think that the Bible should be taken. Li well, yes, it should be taken literally, you know. And uh, once once I start really going through this whole entire series, it's going to be more and more apparent why you should be taking it li literally. And um, he's talking about we haven't read the first few pages, but he's going to completely illustrate why he hasn't read the first few pages. All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Obviously, we could talk about the Big Bang and how God didn't just poof us into existence. But See? <laughs> <laughs> I watched this video once before, but I completely forgot he said this dumb shit right here. It's crazy how you can't believe in the Most High creating the whole entire universe, but then this motherfucker could turn around and talk about how the Big Bang happened. So, how did the Big Bang just poof us all into existence, but a, a, a supreme deity couldn't do it? You see the inconsistency in that? Now, once again, I agree that it does sound far-fetched that there's a supreme being that just put us all into existence. But that's... But there's at least a person that motivated the, the, the beginning of the universe. I'm not out here just saying, boom, pow, the universe just got here by itself. That sounds even... You know, that sounds even more far-fetched than believing that a supreme being did this. You can't believe in the Big Bang and not believe in God. Because both... You know, and once again, this is going to sound a little weird, you know, to a lot of you Christians, but the Big Bang and, and the Most High have no true origin. And for you Christians that are going to get mad at that, tell me where the Most High came from right now. Right now, tell me where the Most High came from. The same thing to you atheist niggas. Where did the Big Bang come from? Exactly. No origin. So you can't pick one and not the other. For me... I don't really discount the Big Bang Theory. I, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Well, if you if you were to ask somebody like me, the Most High created the universe via the Big Bang. And a lot of atheists don't like to hear that. But what's the motivation behind the Big Bang? How did the materials get there for it to happen? Already starting off bad, sir. Even if you think a 
as some Christians do, that God created everything at once through the Big Bang. None of this makes sense. God created the heavens? I mean, that's a synonym for the universe. So God created the universe and Earth at the same time, in the beginning. Except the universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old, and the Earth is only 4.5 billion years old. I mean, if you rewind the... T All right, see, this, this is where I want to start addressing the... the condescending nature of a lot of atheists like these these motherfuckers be talking about the creation of the universe and earth like they were there watching the shit happen until you could show me proof that you were there 14 point whatever billion years ago then your argument has to stop there all right and a lot of this carbon dating and, and technology like that has been debunked you know, a lot of that stuff is not reliable. So I don't know what, you know, a lot of these scientists be basing this shit off. Once again, leave leave, leave documents and shit in the in, in sources in the comment in the comment section so I can know where this shit is coming from. But he's talking about the universe like he was there watching this shit happen. All right. If they don't have the same starting point. And if you know anything about the early universe, darkness wasn't in the picture for hundreds of thousands. So darkness wasn't in the picture of the early universe, but at night when you look up or if you go into space, it's nothing but what? Blackness and fucking lights. Blackness and, and dots of light. You sound, you, you see, you see how damn dumb these niggas sound, bro? Like, I don't, I don't even know how to begin with, you know what, let's just let it run. But you see the pro, they, they, it, they contradict themselves. They say the Bible contradicts itself, but no. They contradict themselves trying to explain how the Bible contradicts itself. I don't, I don't. Thousands of years after the Big Bang, the universe was really, really bright. And, and where did this water come from that God was hovering over? The Earth didn't have water until long after it was formed. It didn't come with a built-in pool. The early universe... Once again, um, both in the Bible, where he just read from... Once again, they like adding text too. They like adding stuff to the Bible uh, subconsciously. Where, where in the world did it? Hold on, hold on. Let me just run back what he said real quick. Just listen real close. God was hovering over. The earth didn't have water until long after it was formed. It didn't come with the... All right. So when, when did it say that this shit gathered up under him like a built-in pool? It just said that he was hovering above the waters. And we all know that water can come in three forms, solid, liquid, or gas. And then also further on in this chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, yeah, I just read this first chapter before I made this video. In the first chapter, it talks about how he, he uh, starts forming the waters in different ways. So we don't necessarily know the state of water that he's dealing with. And then once again, here he goes, acting like he was there in the beginning of the universe. You cannot, you, you cannot even corroborate your statements. Even the people that... You're getting your sources from can't say for sure what the universe looked like. And if you really knew about early science, you would know that the, the Bible in Genesis actually does talk about the earth um, and its appearance in conventional science and conventional history. It was pretty void, not much going on. Same thing that it says in the Bible. All right, so... A built-in pool. The early universe didn't have rain either. And God said, let there be light. And to be honest with you, um, as you said, the early earth didn't have rain. Uh, it really didn't start rain, raining until the time of Noah. So yes, <laughs> you're agreeing with the Bible. It really didn't start raining until the time of Noah. Alright? And if I'm wrong about that, once again, let me know in the comments. But... I did not really see any of accounts of any accounts of rain until Noah. So you agree with the Bible yourself, sir. Take the bias out your damn eyes and then just read the Bible from from a more spiritual perspective, but your ass probably don't even got a soul. There was light. Who who was he talking to? So the fun thing with the serpent Excuse me, we got a quick little advertisement, but to answer his question about who was God talking to? It's pretty irrelevant who he was talking to. I can give you a couple answers, though. Um, later on in the same chapter, it's going to clearly state that he wasn't by himself. And secondly, uh, he creates using words.
So whether or not he was by himself, he's creating the universe via the power of his words. This is actually this this chapter actually is a, is a great example of why you got to be careful with what you say. Because no, I'm not going to say I want a tree and a tree is going to pop up in my backyard. But given the speech and the energy that I put out there, certain things can come back to me. All right. There are no people yet. God saw that let there be light and there was light. Who, who was he talking to? There were no people yet. Exactly. There were no people yet, but there were other. <laughs> Once again, there were other beings around. Just because, see, these atheist niggas think everything is based on humans. They want to talk, talk about the balance of nature and all that shit. And, but they feel like we're the center of the universe. That's, that couldn't even be, that's, that's so far from the truth, bro. Like, people don't recognize that there's a true spiritual that doesn't, re like, we're not ourselves gods like a lot of these Kemet niggas will teach and uh, a lot of these astrology niggas. Like, all that stuff is bull. We need to understand that there's there's other beings. And I'll be the first quote-unquote Christian to tell you right now that the Most High is not the only being out there. I guess you can consider me a polytheist because I do believe in multiple gods, but I only adhere to one, that being Abaya, Yahweh, and his son. So I guess him and his son, that would make two. All right? So, um, yeah. These atheist dudes be talking all this shit. And, and he's talking about you guys didn't read the first pages. If you went to, I think, shoot, it's either Psalms or Proverbs. Where the spirit of wisdom, if I'm not mistaken, talks about the account of creation. And it's, it's from her perspective. Watching what the Most High was doing. So it shows you, yes, there were, there were more people watching this thing go down. It wasn't just the Most High. So you read your damn Bible before you discount the whole entire fucking book. Moron. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning. The first day. God hasn't even made the sun yet. This should tell you that at this time, morning and night, or time in general, was not based on the sun. You think that the Most High needed the sun to determine whether or not it was day or night? Once again, this is God we're talking about. We're not talking about regular human beings. See, these niggas be thinking they God. You see, like, bro. That's not until verse 14. So, so where is this light coming from? And how do we get evening and morning when there's no sun? Those words have no meaning when there's no sun. Also, darkness isn't a separate but equal thing. Darkness is the absence of light, just like cold is the absence of heat. Those aren't two different things, they are different amounts of one thing. God apparently couldn't pass a grade school science class. Well, first of all, talking like that could really get you hurt out here in New York. There's a lot of Israelite brothers. Um, the way you're talking right now could offend the, the Muslim brothers. You apparently are not from a major city. Somebody would dead pack you out talking about the most high couldn't pass a, a science quiz or whatever the fuck. Watch your mouth. If he created this whole entire shit, and once again, the most high didn't write this book. A man wrote this book under the instruction and the influence of the spirit of the most high. So remember, it's coming from spiritual and carnal perspective. This is, this is the account that this man is giving and this is the way that he can understand it. All right? And then also, let, let me just run this back so I can address everything point by point. Like cold is the absolute meaning when there's 14. So, so where is this light coming from? And how do we get evening and morning when there's no sun? Those words have no meaning when there's no sun. Also, darkness isn't a separate but equal thing. Darkness is the absence of light, just like cold is the absence of heat. Those aren't two different things. They are different amounts of one thing. All right. Um, I, I definitely see where he's coming from. But, but linguistically speaking, to explain something to somebody, th this is the kind of terminology you would use. Now, imagine if they broke down in the middle of the Bible... To explain how light works and that, that it would have took away from the whole entire point of creation. 
So yes, you're right. I'm, I'll, I'll admit you're right, but you're missing the point. And once again, if you're God, once again, we're not dealing with regular people. He did separate the morning from the night. It could have been night all the time. It could have been day all the time. But he had clear and distinct points where these where these transitions would happen during the day. Once again, he created this. He doesn't go by conventional rules of physics and, and light and shit like that. Once again, you're not dealing with a human being. You're not even dealing with a, a, um, a common deity. You're dealing with the most supreme. That's something that these niggas don't remember when they're reading the Bible. This is somebody not dealing with conventions of physics like we do. We cannot manipulate physics like the Most High can. This man just poofed earth into existence. You think that he can't separate light from the darkness? And, and however he done that, whether, whatever, or however technical you want to get with it? This nigga thinks he's so smart, bro. God apparently couldn't pass a grade school science class. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning. The second day. It took God a full day to make the sky? It's empty. What was <laughs> it's crazy how this nigga was talking about how the Most High couldn't pass a science course or whatever. Bro, do you realize that there's multiple components to the sky and shit that exists within the sky? Yes, it took him a day. <laughs> the fuck? And and then on top, well, he could have took as much time as he wanted to. Let's start there. All right. Secondly, in once again, somewhere else in the Bible, I'm not gonna get too specific because I don't want to lie. Somewhere in the Bible, it talks about how he basically drew out and built all this stuff like an architect. So, it's a little bit more hands-on than just speaking it out all the time. But, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more than just, the sky is empty. Do you not realize that there's the ozone layer, uh, different parts of the atmosphere, you have the clouds that are a part of the sky, the vastness, you know, the, the size of the sky... Talking about it's fucking empty, but you're the science whiz here, right? You sound like a fucking idiot. Is there to make? And how did we get evening and morning again? There's still no sun. But more than all that, look at the language. God created. Every time you said some dumb shit like that about there's still no sun, we already addressed that, all right? It's this separation, this vault, but it sounds very much like a solid thing, like a roof over our heads. But there's no roof. There's no physical barrier from the rain. It's the sort of thing. This nigga's retarded. <laughs> Bro, the rain exists within the, I guess, the innermost atmosphere that we exist in, or one of them. It's not like the, the clouds are in fucking space. <laughs> are you stupid? The clouds are not in space. They're they're within the the breathable layer. You know? You can hop out of a plane next to a cloud and you'll be just fine. You know, as long as you have a parachute. It's not like you're in space where you suffocate and die. The clouds exist within our atmosphere. But you want to get around talking all this shit. Yes, there is no barrier between us and the rain. It's supposed to get down. The rain is supposed to be a part of our atmosphere, you ding dong. But once again, that, that's why we're not dealing with, you know, the same atmospheric pressure and gravity that would exist everywhere else in space. Because there, there is barriers and stuff like that that protect us from what happens in, you know, the universe that we don't necessarily see. You would write if you didn't understand what gravity was yet. It also... But there's no roof. There's no physical barrier from the rain. It's the sort of thing you would write if you didn't understand what gravity was yet. It also sounds like a flat roof. I mean, I honestly don't know what gravity had to do with any of that. <clears throat> but okay. God separated the top floor from the bottom floor. I mean, if the earth were... F Bro, <laughs> How does that sound like a flat roof? Just because you have a, a roof or you separate the top from the bottom doesn't mean it's flat. Is your fucking house flat? I know a lot of houses with triangular tops. Once again, as you were bringing up flat tops, but where in the Bible did it say that there was a flat separation? 
There they go, assuming shit. You have a terrible, terrible reading comprehension. And then you want to get around trying to explain to niggas why they shouldn't believe in the Bible. Break down a Dr. Seuss book and then come back to this shit. I, like, I, I don't know how... You need to start reading more, sir. Flat. This language might make sense, but spoiler, it's not. And God said, let the wall... Ooh, see that? He thinks he slammed dunk on the Bible. Once again, nobody said the earth was flat. You sound like a damn dumbass, bro. Water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground the land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. That implies that there was a time when water covered the entire planet. And then God mopped it up into one location. But our planet was never entirely water. I mean, there was a time when it had no... Once again, um, he's, um, expli nobody, nobody in the Bible said the whole entire earth was water. But it, it is explaining that there was water here. And as you read in the last chapter, he just created a separation from the above waters, that being the cloud and everything... That's a part of the sky and the waters below. So now we're dealing with the sky and whatever water he left in the bottom. You're, once again, your reading comprehension is terrible. He just, we just talked about where this water came from. Water. So there was never that God mopped it up into one location. But our planet was never entirely water. I mean, there was a time when it had no water. Once again, um, I've heard different accounts about... Uh, the beginning of Earth or whatever. See, once again, this is why we can't believe humans on what the where the beginning of Earth came. None of us niggas were here. And then we have an answer in the Bible and nobody wants to believe it. And then we run around like chickens trying to figure out where the beginning of the Earth came from. Bro. <laughs> once again, I'm going to address the account I've heard about early Earth. There was always water here. It was just vaporized. If that's what you were trying to say... And then once again, talking about that vapor water, the Most High just dealt with that and made the sky and the seas. So, bruh. So there was never any water to gather. Then God said, let... Never read the Bible with the assumption, especially the creation part of the Bible. Never read with the, with the perspective that you knew what happened. You weren't here. None of the scientists that have a, a documents about any of this shit. Uh, not even documents, theories and other shit. Like, like They were not here, all right? The land. And then once again, the Most High does have the power to separate the the water and the land. Bruh. Produce veget. Once again, I'm not addressing this point anymore. If he says anything about so God was able to do this, yes, he was. He, this is the Most High, all right. Nation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced vegetation. Plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning. Sorry about that, another advertisement. Trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning. The third day. Again. Honestly, after reading that, I don't know where he could find an issue with it, but he found an issue with it. He basically just said that there's going to be trees and um, they're going to be having seeds that create more trees that are just like it. That That's how plants work, right? Let's see where the problem is with this. You know, a lot of these atheist niggas, they complain, complain, complain and have no solutions, right? And then they want to talk about they have no faith in humanity. You niggas sound dead. We have all the answers, but y'all have no faith in humanity. Y'all niggas sound stupid. Evening, morning, no sun doesn't make sense. But how do you make plants that bear fruit and vegetation when you can't have photosynthesis because, again, there's no sun? And how come the land... But there is light. You're ignoring the fact that there is light. So they were growing from the light. You know? 
Uh, man no. has to produce all this stuff now. So much for the God of creation. It's like the Bible says he created land, then thought, okay, I'm done now. They can do the rest of the work. Also, by this account, the first living things in the universe are plants and trees which are above ground. That's not- I low-key remember this part. Listen to this dumb shit he's about to say. You, you, gotta, you gotta be a complete fucking idiot. And this is why I don't take science seriously no more. Because you gotta be a complete fucking idiot to believe something like this. I'm just think about think about the food chain and how it works and then and then you'll understand how damn dumb this guy sounds now they can do the rest of the work also by this account the first living things in the universe are plants and trees which are above ground that's not true the first forms of Hold on. do all this stuff now so much for the god of creation it's like the bible says he created land then thought okay i'm done now they can do the rest of the work. Well, that that's that's how plants work. If you're if you're referring to the the seeds bearing plants after its kind and shit, nigga, you think he was gonna sit here and intervene into the whole entire universe the whole entire time? What would we have learned as human beings? What what would what would interactions really mean to us if um we were always being directed by the Most High? We would not be able to express our true character. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. This this guy just, he wants to complain, complain, complain. Of course the seeds were just gonna, like, that's how it, that's how the earth was meant to maintain itself after he got it going, after he got it started. You sound like you have spiritual daddy issues, dude. Like, my God, dude. Also, by this account, the first living things in the universe are plants and trees which are above ground. That's not true. The first forms of life were entirely in the sea, and they were single-celled organisms, not complex plants with the sort of sex organs that would allow them to produce seeds. And Once again, you are not here. Um, oh my god, just, just listen, bro. God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to... All right, this is going to be a good part. Uh, let's read this from the beginning where he was saying, and God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let, their serve as, let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days years and let them be light in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth all right give light on the earth and it was so god made two great lights the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night he also made the stars god set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness and god saw that it was good finally we get the sun and the moon but wait the moon is described as a lesser light and if you know anything about the moon it's that it doesn't give off light yes it does yes it does watch he's about to contradict himself right now it reflects light and therefore it's giving light thank you for contradicting yourself it doesn't matter how it does it it does it that's the point from the sun so what is the bible talking about and the idea that the greater light the sun governs the day while the moon governs the night doesn't make sense either it's not like the sun goes away at night that's what toddlers think well it goes away to your perception yes the sun goes away and the moon comes yet we know it doesn't just disappear but it's serving its purpose on the other side of the earth and even though we might not be able to see the sun, it is still there. I mean, when it's nighttime for us, it's daytime for someone else. So there's no real separation between the night and day. It's always sunny somewhere. Also, but is it sunny by you, sir, is the question. If God made these two lights, where does one go when it's off duty? God never tells us. Also, the you sound like a toddler, sir. You you want to talk about people being toddlers? It's the, that's, it's the kind of dumb, petty shit like that that'll get you punched in your face by some of these Hebrew Israelite brothers, by some of these 5% niggas, saying dumb, idiotic shit like that. Yes, we know where the sun goes, but to your eyes, it's gone. 
sun and the moon were not created at the same time. The sun is really old. The moon is not. The moon didn't appear until a billion years after the earth. I just get this video wrapped up because I have to, you know, watch the file size. So I just have to, you know, attach this to the end of this video. But let's get this popping. Really old. The moon is not. The moon didn't appear until a billion years after the earth was formed and the earth formed long after the sun arrived. And God supposedly made these two lights to separate light from darkness, but God also did that back in verse 4. So did he just separate light from darkness twice? I mean, did an all-knowing God get amnesia? It also says God set the light. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. The reason why the sun, and it says it in, in the verses you were just reading, the sun and the moon were really created as signs. They're really supposed to tell us, we eat, once again, it, it, it tells us in the Bible, we're going to use them for the time of day, uh, the day and the months, you know, there's stuff like that. And then also, that's what we associate light with in our minds. We can't necessarily prove, even, even um, a lot of scientists agree, if you were to get rid of the sun, we wouldn't necessarily know until, you know, some time after because light would still be being passed on to the earth. So how much does the sun have to do with actual light? I might sound crazy for saying that, but y'all can, you know, hash that out in the comments. It's in the vault of the sky, but the sun is not in our sky. It's not in the earth's atmosphere. Remember, we revolve around the sun, not the other way around. These verses also say... I don't know what he just said. Is not in our skies. I mean, did an all-knowing God get amnesia? It also says God set the lights in the vault of the sky. But the sun is not in our sky. It's not in the... But it's close enough to our sky that we can see it, right? Once again, you're playing semantics. These niggas love playing semantics. Look at this rat fuck. Yo, <laughs> I don't know, bro. Earth's atmosphere. Remember, we revolve around the sun, not the other way around. These verses. And the only reason why I'm sending ad hominem attacks is because he's sending ad hominem attacks to Abba Yah. And I don't play that shit, so. This is also say God made the stars. But think about that. God made our sun. God made the Earth's moon. And then God created all the stars. Do you know how many stars there are? That, I mean, I know people... That shows you how great the Most High is, that he created all the stars. Yes. Yes, there's a lot of stars. It shows how great he was. Joke. How great he is, rather. About how Carl Sagan said billions and billions. And he never actually said that phrase. But there are really billions and billions of stars. So... God made the greater light and the lesser light, and then, like an afterthought, made several billions of something else. And the Bible just glosses over all that in a single sentence. And by the way, the sun is a star. Saying you're creating the sun, then the... Alright. <clears throat> I'm, I'm about to really rip into what you just said. That's like saying, um... Damn, I can't even think of uh, of an of an analogy so damn dumb. Like, shoot, humans are on the planet. Gandhi was born on some day. Does that mean that you're discounting Gandhi because there were already humans here? No, you're making a distinction between Gandhi's existence and existence and everyone else. Yes, we know the sun is a star. But we're not going to act like it's not an important star. It, there's a clear distinction between our sun and the rest of these stars. Stop playing semantics. Stars, that's like saying you're going to go shopping for some lucky charms, but but then you might have to make another trip to buy some cereal. Like, you, you did that already. Okay, you could have got cereal but didn't get lucky charms, right? So you actually gave that analogy backwards. That's like saying going, you're going to the, sto the, to the store to get cereal, right? And you get everything but Lucky Charms. And then you go to the store to say, I'm getting Lucky Charms. You sound stupid, nigga. And if God made the stars to give light on the earth, how come we can't... He didn't say that. ...see all those stars? I mean, at best, if you're in certain parts of the world... He already told you which stars and which lights he put in the earth. Or, excuse me, put in the sky for... 
each purpose. So I don't even want to hear the rest of what you and, and you get to witness a truly starry sky. You're not seeing all the stars. You're not seeing billions and billions of stars. They definitely are not lighting the earth. And why are these stars giving? I promise you, if you live somewhere where there's dead ass no lights outside, like outside of New York. So if you live in like middle America, no fucking street lights, nothing. If you stand outside long enough, you'll act, your eyes will actually adjust to the moonlight. As a matter of fact, sir. So once again, you don't even know what you're talking about. Light on earth. I thought God already said, let there be light. And I thought God already separated the light from the darkness. But now he's making light again. Like, dude, get it right the first time. You're God. And I once thought again, God already created. This was not written. The Most High did not write this, nigga. In the heavens in the first sentence of Genesis. If stars weren't... Once again, this is, this is somebody's best attempt at describing what the Most High did from a man's perspective. And you're getting that twisted up. So, when, when this person, whoever wrote this book, when this person decided that they were going to bring up the introduction of the, the sun and the moon, they gave their two cents on it as well. And, and gave the best illustration in our head as to why they're here. And they gave every single purpose. All right? A part of that, then what exactly was in those heavens? If you We don't know. And I know atheists hate when we say we don't know. But, but you know, tell me, how do I say this? Until you know everything, you can't even get mad at niggas for saying that shit. I might not have the answer, but somebody else does. And that's what y'all niggas failed to, failed to understand. Just because I might not know doesn't mean the whole entire belief falls flat. There's some people with other answers that have the right answers. Left out the biggest ingredient in a recipe, you don't get credit for making the thing. It's also a bit ironic that God created signs in the sky because that's something astrologers believe. And no, 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 no. Astrology or astrologers base their whole entire life on the movement of planets and stars. All we're doing is determining what fucking time of day it is or what day of week it is. You're making a, a, a false equivalency. You sound stupid. If Christians say astrologers are blasphemous, if you're putting your trust in an astrologer, you are not putting your trust in God, and that's supposedly bad. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. Well, at least we have a sun now. It took four days to get the actual first day. And God... Look at this nigga thinking that time, uh, that, that the Most High is constricted to the conventional, you know, perceptions of time. Like, bro, come on. Said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning. The All right. All right. So once again, for anybody with reading comprehension, there's no problem with this uh, Genesis 20 to 23. He made birds, he made fish, and uh, they reproduced the fuck. Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. Again, God didn't even make those creatures. He let the water do it. How lazy can you? Imagine creating water. Imagine creating something that could create something. Why didn't you think about it like that? That's not laziness, bum. You sound stupid, yo. But if you look at this timeline, I mean, God made living creatures after he made plants. That's not right. That's not what the fossil record shows. Or any All right, now that's the part I was waiting for. What kind of idiot do you have to be? Remember, think of the food chain. What idiot do you have to be to believe that there was any moving, breathing, like, you know, carbonated, like, I don't know how to explain, like, Animals. How could you believe there were animals here before plants? They would have had nothing to fucking eat except for each other. And we all know that not all animals are carnivorous or omnivorous. We know that there's a lot of, you know, herbivores. 
You sound fucking stupid. As a matter of fact, some of the biggest creatures, like such as the cattle, um, certain dinosaurs, um, hippo, if I'm not mistaken, hippopotamus and manatees, they all eat plants. So how, and once again, the energy transfer goes from the sun to plants to animals to humans. Given that you eat animals. So why in the world would it be animals, plants, and then us? Like, it, it was obviously plants, animals, then us. You have to, I don't give a fuck what the fossil record, uh, what the fossil records say or what science told you. Common sense says that's bullshit. Come on now. Yep. This is somebody that can't think for themselves and you're trusting this nigga with the Bible? Fuck out of here. Piece of evidence. It's the other way around. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. God didn't make these creatures either. He let the land do it. Lazy. But if he made the land, right? So if there was no land or no water, none of these creatures would have been here, right? You sound salty that you didn't create the universe. The only way you could be salty at any of this is if you beat God to the punch and created the universe. But you didn't do that, right? Fuck out of here. You sound We're talking. You sound salty, bruh. About creatures that move along the ground. I mean, insects, reptiles, things like that. They were around for hundreds of millions of years before. Once again, we're, we're not dealing with conventional scientific history. You have to disregard that for now to understand what the what the scriptures were saying. And if you if you understand the scriptures, you would understand why that scientifically makes sense. Not the other way around. Bible disproves science, not the other way around. And once again, not I don't even want to say it like that. Bible should re reconfigure science or re or, or confirm science. If that makes sense. Nobody should use science to try to disprove the Bible. It won't work. Those other wild animals. And they all originated in the sea, not the land. Also, livestock? I mean, we domesticated cattle. They never lived in the wild. Yo, I forgot he said that, bro. Now, how the fuck do you domesticate an animal that wasn't domesticated before? I will give four billion dollars. I will give you four billion dollars to the first person that can answer that question. How the fuck did we just domesticate an animal that wasn't domesticated before? It had to be domesticated because it was wild before. What animal was here that was not in the wild before we got here? I should honestly end this whole entire video, right? You know what? It's Chris from New York and nigga not from the city though. It's Chris from Long Island. I'm back with another video. I can't take the idiocy, the idiocy no more. We're done with this video. I think, I hope I illustrate. Uh, I, I hope I illustrated my point as to the dumb shit that atheists say. Look at the Bible and all this other spiritual stuff going on with your own eyes. Don't let these niggas think for you because they have no soul and they're debased. And if that stuff isn't true, at the very least, they're too damn dumb to try to, to, try to explain anything to anyone. Alright? Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. We're running this channel up. Road to 100 subscribers. Peace.